Hey, this is Capellan running Disappearing of Gensokyo, easy mode, new game, no DLC, starting in 3, 2, 1, go. So, this is Disappearing of Gensokyo, it's a fan game based on the Toa Project, a series of Japanese bullet hell shooters starring a cast of girls in frilly dresses and funny hats. Whereas the those games are vertically scrolling 2D bullet hell shooters I'm no good at, this game, this fan game, is a 2.5D twin stick shooter ARPG kind of hybrid that I'm also not much good at, but good enough to try speedrunning. So, this is a tutorial stage, we can't skip it, but it is like most stages in that our goal is to get to the end of the stage, and because this is a speedrun, we want to do that as quickly as possible. We can't run straight to the end of the stage because of barriers like this, and usually the way you get rid of those barriers is by killing a certain set of enemies, Either usually either all the enemies in the room or all the most powerful enemies in the room. Note that the barriers are represented by a particle effect, which takes a little while to fade in and fade out, so you'll be seeing a lot of things like what you're seeing right now, where I walk through a barrier that looks like it's there. It's not, it's just it hasn't faded out yet. So, this game has a sprint move you've already seen me use, it's driven by a yellow bar at the bottom of the screen. This game has a two character party, both characters share the sprint meter and their shield and health, which are indicated at the bottom of the screen. That blue bar works just like Halo in that it regenerates if you don't take damage for a little while. And when it goes down, you can only take about five hits. There's a two-character party, like I said, but we'll only be using two, char two characters this whole game. The first is Tenchi, who we have to take on, who we have to start every level with. So if you like Tenchi, good news, you'll be seeing a lot of her. Her primary attack is a Fire Blast, which pierces enemies and does quite a bit of damage. Her secondary is a Sword Strike, it sucks, so I won't be using it. And her Bomb drops a rock, which stuns enemies when it first lands and explodes to deal more damage. Bombs are driven by green pickups, like the kind in the bottom right hand corner. And they're fairly critical to a lot of the game. This fight is effectively an auto-scroller. Most of the fights in this game are like this. Unless I say differently, you can assume that most of the enemies here are basically spawning on a timer. And even if I kill them quickly, it's not going to save me any time. Now, if you like Tenshi, good news! This game has two Tenshis! Now, uh, now we're back down to one again. So, I'll probably get around to explaining why there are two Tenshis later, but... For now, what you need to understand is that what I just did is how you're going to see me fight most bosses and mini-bosses. I'm going to throw bombs at them until they go away. This game has some interesting patterns, being based off a Bullet Hell series, but you won't be seeing them, they're slow. So what you just saw there, uh, after every mission you go to a hub world, but we aren't going to spend much time there. Instead, I instantly pause and restart. That does two things. First off, that sends me to the next level without any slow menuing, but more importantly, it's going to give us access to the other character we'll be using this run. If you know Toho, you probably need no introduction to Marisa Kurosame, the Ordinary Magician. We're not supposed to have her until after stage 5, but... Thanks to this glitch, we have managed to use her early. Ignore the sound of the... Ignore the sound of my phone going off in the background, I'll deal with that later. So, Marissa's primary attack is a laser. Her secondary turns the laser into a hello laser, which does more damage over a bigger area, but consumes stamina. And her bomb is Boss Killing Nightmare, I'm about to demonstrate on this poor fairy. So, the way Marissa's bomb works is when it lands, it explodes, which deals damage and knockback, though boss type enemies like Shirino there aren't affected by knockback. Second, it leaves around an area of effect that damages anyone who stands in it. There are no iframes in this game on any characters or bosses, so bosses, which tend to have phases where they stand still, will take the full brunt of the damage. Although Marusa is usually the correct choice to deal a bunch of damage, and I lost a couple seconds there because I wasn't entirely paying attention. Marissa does have one weakness in that her laser takes a second to charge, and if you're hit by sling which does knockback or stun, which is pretty much everything in this game, your laser stops working and you have to charge it again. So there will be a couple times where I will switch to Tenshi, just so that I can't get stun locked. And if that all wasn't enough, Marissa also has a speed upgrade which we will be purchasing. 
One sec, just gotta throw out a couple bombs here, because they're going to help me clear out a couple enemies really quickly and make ending the stage fast. Come on. Okay, that wasn't as quick as possible. So this game has not one, but two upgrade systems. The first are driven by magic pieces, which you saw me pick up at the start of the stage. I won't be doing anything with those, they're too slow to collect and you need too many for them to be useful. But I will be picking up a lot of blue points items, which you've already seen me pick up. To be on pace, I need 800 by the end of the 8th stage. That's usually not too big of an ask, although all drops in this game are random. Along the route, you kill enough enemies that, on balance, you should have 800 by the end of the 8th stage. And there are a couple ways to farm if you're behind. So, hit the hub world, and I instantly hit restart, same as before. So, what I'm going to do now is go through the stage, say hi to Raisin, you won't be seeing her again. So, here's Kogasa, we need to escort her back to the start of the level. Thing is though, Kogasa doesn't really care about whether there are enemies ahead, she only really cares about our position, so the fastest way to do this is to just run straight ahead and toss out bombs to kill enemies so they can't risk hurting our escortee. Now that they're all dead, I can go ahead and run back. So, you may have noticed that I've already said the word bomb enough times to end up on a government watch list, and that is because bombs are quite critical to the game. The game gives them out like candy, as you can see, and this stage especially has a bunch lying around. So what I'm going to do here, instead of running past these enemies, I'm going to actually use my bomb and kill them. And I'm going to do that so that I can farm up some more blue points items. So, here is a magic wall. I can't break it, I need a MacGuffin. Say hi to Tenshi again. Say bye to Tenshi again. So I pick up a MacGuffin and that locks me in another auto scroller esque fight. In fact, if you look in the top right hand corner, you'll see that there is a timer, which the fact that it's counting, you know, just counting down normally is a good indication of how I can't speed this fight up even if I wanted to. You may also see character heads kind of bouncing around. Those are pickups that allow you to switch characters, but again, we already have the two characters which we will be using this game, and we aren't going to be switching away from them. So, that's stage 3, and now we're coming up on stage 4, where we fight our first boss, Suika. And I may butcher some Japanese pronunciations there, if I do, go Minasori. So, let's talk a little bit about boss mechanics. They're not super relevant in this fight, but they are relevant later, so I'll say them now to give you something to chew on. Just in, uh, same thing, instantly hit restart to go to the next level. So the way bosses work in this game is that bosses throw out a volley of attacks, usually either bullets or melee attacks, and then, and only then, do they check whether their health is below a certain threshold. If you've done enough damage to them, they move on to another phase. However, if you do too much damage to them, that doesn't interrupt their current phase or set of attacks. For example, there, uh, she did not go into her second phase until well after she had taken a ton of damage. And although she has, she has a couple more phases, she just died before she could use any of the other ones. Note particularly the way that fight worked, and it took less than 30 seconds, which is about how long a boss fight should take if I do it right, is that she starts off the fight by standing still, and so, we toss a whole bunch of Maris' bombs on her, and because she's standing still, she stays in the AoE and takes all the damage. That's pretty much the key to how we'll be killing bosses quickly throughout this run. Uh, didn't quite see what that said. Uh, 400, I think? If you look really closely in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the current number of points. Again, I had to be somewhat mindful of it, because I may have to detour and farm on a level to be sure that I have enough points, because if I don't have 800 by the 8th stage, it's run over. So, this is stage 5. It is the stage where we are supposed to pick up Marissa. Hey Marissa. And it has the dubious honor of being a escort mission auto-scroller. This obnoxiously slow ferry maid has to get to a certain part of the map before we can advance, 
but she's so slow that we can go ahead, clear out all the enemies she would run into, and then take a moment to detour onto this questionably shaped rock. So this does two things. First off, this... The main reason why we are doing this is because this allows us to farm up some blue points items. But the second, it also serves as a good example of why we aren't going to be picking up magic pieces this run. Ah. As you s So to pick up magic pieces, you have to get in optional fights like this. They're slow most of the time, but here, because it's an auto-scroller, we get back just in, so just in time to save our fairy maid from a wave of ravenous penguins. And yes, penguins in the desert, and this text box is going to stay here for the rest of the stage. I'm not 100% certain if that's an issue with the English translation, or if it happens in the original Chinese as well. So if you're looking at the radar, you may notice that in going ahead, I have been killing enemies before they even really get on the screen, because Maris' effective range is pretty much the entire screen. This game has some serious inter-character balances, and Marissa is one of the more broken ones. Not only is her attack excellent against crowds because it pierces enemies and has a massive range and area of effect, but it is all it also does a ton of damage, so it's useful against boss-type enemies. And she has 999 ammo. When you spawn in, you spawn in with five bombs and full ammo for both of your characters, and look at this, like, even... Look at how low my ammo's going down, I only just burned a tenth while I was saying all of that. Anyway, we're waiting here for the fairy maid to get to the end. She just did. So, now I gotta kill Alice before I can leave. Just did. And now I'm out. 218's a reasonable time, about 2 minutes and 10 seconds of that level is just the fairy's movement, so you can only really speed it up by getting to her quickly in the first place, and getting killing Alice and leaving the level quickly at the very end. Five hundred and two, that's okay. I should be fine with that many, but we'll see how it goes. So this next stage is sort of a search and destroy mission. There are four juiced up fairies that I have to get rid of before I can leave. And I already know where they are, so I'm going to run in, toss bombs at them until they die, and keep going from there. Some enemies here, but with some judicious use of sprint, I can just run past them before they can threaten me. That's two down, two to go. Note it says one out of three, that objective doesn't count the first fairy who's basically just there to introduce you to the fact that there is one with an obnoxious attack that can pretty much insta-kill you. Though you, you may note that even without the speed upgrade that I've hyped up, I'm already moving significantly faster than all of the enemies and they can't catch me. So when I get the speed upgrade, it's only going to get sillier. Just throw out some bombs to clear the way. I guess another thing to note, uh, that makes picking up points items difficult, and 117 is an okay time, I've taken it faster, is that you can only pick up points items after they land, like when you kill an enemy they fly into the ground, they fly up and they only hit the ground about a second later. Although you kind of auto pick up everything at a certain radius, that only takes effect after they've landed, so if you kill enemies and then run past them, you can't really pick things up from them, so you have to actually slow down generally, or kill, el or kill enemies that you know are going to be in your path. So I'm at about 550, I need 
about 220 points out of this level, and that's not too big of an ask. This is a long level with a big ol' fight at the end. Say hello to Aku. Uh, Aku, I don't know how to pronounce names. Anyway, say goodbye to her, you're not really going to be seeing her again. She's an especially bad character for the record, just because her bomb actually has does uh, self damage and has an effective radius that you have to sprint to get out of. It just doesn't make much sense. I guess... Uh, did I discuss why Maris's bomb is kind of not super useful during most levels? If I didn't, I'll just go over it now. So the thing about Maris's bomb, and this may be the first time I've broken shield, but this is what happens when your shield goes down. It makes a beepy noise that I think is ripped from Halo. Here's Alice again, but I've thrown out bombs and now she's dead. There are, sorry, there are three skull cannons here. They, I can stun them all with one of these. Three fairies, but I throw out a stun. A ton of enemies, but I got that bomb. And now I just have to get to the end of the level, which is right here. And here's a fight. Like other fights, you can see I've got 50 seconds, and I can't speed it up. So I guess while I'm here, I'll just explain something that I'm not sure I explained about why I've been using Tenchi's bomb when I've said that Marissa is generally better for clearing enemies. The thing is, so, if you think about it, M Marissa's bomb, when it lands, does knock back and leaves behind an AoE that hurts enemies that stay in that area. So, I mean, you can probably see the anti-synergy here. You want enemies to stay in that area so that they take the full brunt of the damage, but her bomb inherently knocks enemies out of that area. So really, it's not much good on anything that's vulnerable to knockback, which is to say everything but boss enemies. Uh... I didn't do that super well. I took a little too much damage, but I get swarmed by enemies and they all die. Kokoro's here, she'll be our next boss. I may actually be below the points threshold. We'll see how it goes. I should be fine though. So, Kokoro's boss fight takes advantage of some of the boss mechanics that I mentioned earlier. Like I said, to kill her quickly, we want to throw Marissa bombs on her during phases where she will stand still, and her first two attacks are her standing still. So, all we have to do is toss out a series of bombs, and oh, she actually did, uh, I'm not getting the quick kill, because I screwed it up. So, the thing about Kokoro is that her... I did a little too much damage to her, and I skipped the phase that I wanted her to have, where she stands still. I should have waited a little more, because that's going to cost me a couple seconds. Whatever. Anyway, I did too much damage, I skipped her first phase and knocked her right into her second last phase, and that phase does have an insta-kill, which is scary, but the main thing is that it just took... I lost a few seconds, because if she stands still, if I had waited a little longer, then she takes the full brunt of the damage way easier. So, this time I am not going to... Uh, instantly cancel out, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Iku, I'm going to buy Marissa, because I need, again, we've been stealing her this whole time, she'd approve, and then I'm going to go to Kogasa, buy the speed upgrade, and then I hit restart, which will send us to the next level as usual. So this level is one of the longest in the game, because it's one of the largest in the game, so here the speed upgrade is already going to pay for itself.
As you can see, uh, Marissa with the speed upgrade is already faster than enemies spawn in, basically. Oh yeah, and this stage is a lot like the fairy hunt, except instead of hunting fairies, we're hunting werewolves that look like Kagero. So if you like Kagero, sorry, we're going to be killing not her, but a character that looks like her. I'll explain this game's plot in a later stage, maybe. But now that we had the sweet upgrade for Marissa, she is definitively faster than Tenchi. So what we are going to be doing is switching to her for most of our movement, and we only switch to Tenchi because her bomb is significantly more consistent at killing our werewolf buddies. As you can see, all targets neutralized, so now I'm just going to run to here. We've got another one of those barriers that needs a MacGuffin. So I'm going to have to get in another fight. As you can see, 77 whole seconds of fighting, and again, even if I kill enemies quicker, that just means I've got more time to wait around until the next wave spawns in. So I'm not going to be picking up any more blue points items, or if I am, it's not going to give me any real benefit, it's just me stunting or caving to bad habits that I shouldn't... Either way, it's doing stuff I shouldn't be doing. So I don't really need any more upgrades. The thing is, the second... So the second tier of Marus's speed upgrade costs 1,400 points items. That's not something I'm going... Even on these later levels with a ton more enemies, that's not something I'm going to be able to farm and actually save time. Oh. Kind of screwed up a little. This part of the fight's kind of a clusterfuck. Oh, sorry. Language. But uh, I've cleared out almost everything. All that's left are a couple of these zombies. And finally, our sort of stage end boss, Sakia. Or Illusion Sakia. I'll, again, this game has some plot going on. But I get the MacGuffin from her. Now I just wait at the barrier for it to go down. And I'm going to sprint to the end. So, the next stage is the Misty Lake. There is a set... So, what you're supposed to do in this level is there are three super overpowered enemies down the main path. So, when you play this game, you're supposed to go down the main path, get killed by those three overpowered enemies, and then realize what you were really supposed to do is detour off to the side, go around a whole winding set of islands. That's slow, we're not going to do that. See, the thing is, one of our characters, and in fact the character who we have to bring on every single stage, has a reliable stun that will stun even those overpowered enemies. So what we're going to do is we're going to rush in, toss out a bunch of bombs to stun lock the enemies long enough to run past them. You can sort of do this with Marissa instead of Tenchi, which is like a second faster, but it's way more risky and it's way more whis risky. Way, Blech. it's way more risky. It's way less reliable, and you only save like two seconds. So I did that stage in 18 seconds. When I've done it perfectly with Marissa only, I get 16, and it's not worth it. But it is worth it to just barrel straight down, because that stage t played correctly, even if you take it as fast as possible, is still multiple minutes. So, next up is one of the harder stages to speedrun, but also one of the rewarding stages to speedrun. This is the Scarlet Devil Mansion, and unlike most of the fights where enemies still spawn, enemies spawn in on a timer and killing them quickly doesn't do anything, here, when you clear a wave of enemies, it actually starts... It actually spawns in the next wave. Anyway, say hi to Alice. You won't be seeing her again, which is a shame because she is definitively best girl. Kill some enemies. So, 
this mansion, uh, the rooms are actually large enough that enemies will not reliably aggro on you from across the room. So Marissa is a useful pick, not just because she is a murder machine, but also because she actually has the range to aggro enemies onto you. So this hallway, I have to kill all of the enemies in it to proceed. I will use bombs because of course I will. This room, all of the furniture blocks uh, both my laser and enemy projectiles. So if you have some really optimized movement, you can dodge around, uh, have it so that you always have line of sight on an, at least one enemy so you're constantly dealing damage, and duck into cover in a rhythm such that enemies can't kill you effectively. I sorta of did it, so note that I just got a checkpoint. Just got another checkpoint. Uh, this hallway, I do not actually have to kill the enemies, so I'm not going to. I'm going to run right past them. Now, something that you may notice if you're paying attention here is that this game actually has the AI in teams. Uh, enemies on the red team will attack enemies on the blue team, and both of them will attack you, given the chance. There's only a couple stages where that matters. And for this, I kill the zombies quickly. As you may have noticed, zombies, when they die, don't die. They actually get up a couple seconds later. I'm out of bombs, but it doesn't matter too much, because I kill both of those bosses, and I run to the end of the stage. Eh, 211's fine. I've taken it faster than that, but whatever. So. Up next is the boss fight against Romelio, which I hopefully won't screw up in the exact same way I screwed up the Kokoro fight, but if I do, it's not super important. So the way the Romelio boss fight is going to work is that her first two phases both start with her standing still and firing out a volley of attacks. But her third phase, she starts out by lunging towards you, and if she connects, she life steals all of her health back. So what we are going to do specifically is toss out two bombs, and just do nothing for a moment. And what that's going to do is enough damage to knock her into her second phase, and then we're going to throw out the rest of our bombs and kill her. If we threw out three bombs, or two bombs and attacked her, we would actually do enough damage to knock her past her second phase, and she would immediately start her third phase. She would lunge at us, we would... she would lifesteal all the damage she, to her health back, and then we would die. That's slow, we don't do that, we do the quick kill, and she's dead in 30 seconds. So, uh, we're against a stage with some... We're against the second most auto-scroller stage, only because the most auto-scroller stage is the fairy made one. This one, at least, there are some time, at least most of the time has enemies you have to kill. And I'll use this for a moment to sort of explain the plot, or at least try, because... So, the game's plot, at least on the surface, is that Tenshi is hanging around, and then all kinds of weird stuff that's definitely not supposed to be in Gensokyo, like the Sinsacks, which are a gross 2chan meme from the bad days of the fandom, and all kinds of phantom enemies, like the Tenshi and Alice and Sakia that I've been killing, start showing up. And we try to find we try to find series protagonist and Shrine Maiden Ramu to figure out what the heck's going on, but we can't find her. So we take it upon people and figure out what the heck's going on, rescue Ramu, and stop this from destroying Gensokyo. Now that's on paper what it's about. Because in practice, uh, you have to understand if you don't already, and you, you probably do if you're watching this, because this is a niche game. Uh, the Toho Project has been around for longer than I've been alive, and has a large amount of fandom involvement. There is just a ton of fan content for this series, like all kinds of fan art of the characters, all kinds of fan remixes, this game's game series excellent music, tons of fan fiction and Dajinshi, and fan games like this one, which is actually available on Steam for 15 bucks if this seems like your jam. 
So, what's actually going on in the plot, at least what I think should be going on, is that essentially the things invading Gensokyo are a metaphor for, you know, the fandom and its engagement with the series. There was a period for a while when a lot of the characters, at least a lot of the way the fandom perceived various characters, wasn't tied to anything actually in the series canon, which, for the record, is fairly slim. The game series this is based off of are a series of really arcadey shoot 'em ups and some tie in books, essentially. Uh, though, you know, at least that was, that was the state at the time. It's gotten a little more in depth since then, I suppose you could say. But the thing is... Oh, one sec. Sorry, do you like penguins? Hope you don't. At least in theory, this could be a discussion of, you know, the fandom engagement. Uh, the series canon getting overridden by the series fanon is kind of an interesting idea and something that you could only really do with a series like this that has such a history of fan involvement. The problem is that this game, I'm pretty sure, was written by a bunch of memers and not people who are willing to, you know, take that premise and play it to the interesting social commentary that it could do. So, it's kind of a mess. The story is just kind of in practice all over the place. And it indulges in a bunch of gross parts of the fandom that really should have been left back in like 07, 08 where they belonged. Oh yeah, sorry, RIP headphone users. Oh, we blasted off. 2 minutes 43 seconds is a reasonable time. About 2 minutes and 30 is just enemies on the clock. The only thing that you can speed up is killing the bosses at that very last phase quickly, and killing Nue and the last few enemies really quickly. Because everything else is just on a global timer, and you have to wait it out. Anyway, we took the rocket, we're going to the moon. And if you know Toho, you know that the moon is full of rabbits, because in Eastern mythology, like, you know, whereas in the West we see the man in the moon, in the East they tend to see the rabbit in the moon. And here, and so here in Toho, the moon is full of rabbits. And the rabbits fought a war with the US, I think, uh, during the 1969 moon landing. I think Neil Armstrong was supposed to be a space marine. Uh, I don't know this part of the canon very well. Anyway, there are a bunch of moon rabbits, and they are red team, so they will gladly kill other enemies as well as me. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see a bunch more of these, and I'm going to run right past them. So I'm going to do that, go here, which starts off a fight. And I'm going to try to kill... Yeah, I kill this wave of rabbits as quickly as possible. Then I step outside to... Oh, no. That's scary. I might actually die. Okay, I didn't. So what happens is, when I step out there, I start off a wave of rabbits and flying saucers. And they're just going to keep going. There's a barrier ahead that I can't cross. But if I stand out there, all I'm really doing is just standing out there in the way of a bunch of enemies and getting shot up. So I just stay back, clear out some of the enemies that built up over the rest of the level. I'm kinda low on bombs and that sucks because there's a boss enemy at the end. So I'll just have to kill her the old-fashioned way. There are a bunch of enemies here, but I'm too fast. I'll just run right past them. Now here is our final boss, Clown Piece. She's a hell fairy. She's dressed like the US flag because Again, Lunar Invasion or something. You can go ahead and chant USA. Oh yeah, also the moon has water. Shout out to NASA. And we have to wait a couple seconds before this stage is done. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, water in this game actually does splash, which is funny. 
sometimes because the power ups flash when they land in it, but they float. I don't know the physics here. The next stage is technically underwater, but if you look at the dialogue, the characters literally ask, oh, wait, we're underwater, why is everything the same? And decide that they shouldn't worry about it too much. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. The way this stage works is that there is another barrier at the end, which we need to break with a MacGuffin. And so we are going to go ahead and run past these enemies at the start. And there's a lot of Minecraft TNT. Run right past these, because we are going straight for the objective marker, and that's that kicks off the wave of enemies that we need to kill to get the barrier breaker. So, we just picked up a full power-up, that yellow square, and that gave us full ammo, which, as I've mentioned, isn't super important, but more importantly, it gave us full bombs. Now this is one of the few places where Maris's bombs are useful against normal like mobs of enemies because this level has a really good choke point that enemies will you know effectively have to run into. So I've just cleared them out. You have to wait to pick up the MacGuffin until it says pick up ironstone or the game soft locks because it wants you to pick up an object you've already picked up. You can't pick it up again, so you soft lock. But we're done. Up ahead is Junko, she will be our next boss. Now I screwed it up in practice before, but hopefully hopefully I've got it down this time. If you play play this right, you should kill Junko in like 30 to 35 seconds. If you screw it up, you get locked in a survival phase and it's going to take you more like 55 seconds. So, you know, fingers crossed I do this right, but, you know, that can be a tall order sometimes. These early parts will actually uh, kill you really easily if you... Yep, I think I got the quick kill. So, uh, Junko's attacks are kind of funny because they miss right in front of her. And I got the quick kill. Or, not the quickest kill, but quick enough. I lost a couple seconds when she ran away from me. I didn't get the survival phase, so I didn't have to wait an inordinate amount of time. Also, this game has a camera where you can... Uh, kind of like zoom in. But it's completely useless, so it's only useful for stunting afterwards. Like, you, you can't actually aim with it on. It's no good. Anyway, that was the last normal stage, so now we're on to the final stage. And the final stage is a complete disaster. It's, like, even more of a complete derailment in quality and sanity than Zen in Half-Life 2. We're now in the space dimension or something. There's a lot of ugly-looking platforms, a lot of really finicky teleporters we have to deal with. It's just no good. If I get hold, held up, or screw up teleporting here, I will die, and that's going to cost me a lot of time. But I've spent some time routing this out, so that hopefully shouldn't happen. Like, there is speci a specific pattern of dashes that I do so that I have enough stamina to make it through all the portals without dying. And first try? First try! Great stuff. So, uh, coming up next is Reimu. She is a boss type enemy, so guess how we are going to kill her? If you guessed bombs, you're wrong. Unfortunately, we need to save our bombs for a reason that will be apparent later. So, Reimu, we're going to have to kill the old fashioned way. So, on harder difficulties, you can't tank Reimu Zafuda, but on easy, we can and do, because Reimu Zafuda do not do stun damage, so we can tank them and just l keep lasering her. You know, we can only tank so many, but for the ones we can tank, it's just very useful. So, we've done enough to knock her down to her final phase, so she moves to the center and lets us laser her in the meantime. Now we just have to dodge some projectiles. 
Okay, good. Uh, I didn't do it as perfect as I could, but anyway, we talk to her, she flies up, and then she explodes. Okay. So, she explodes into Raymu the Black and Raymu the right. I, White. I don't think this is canon. Our choice determines our final boss fight and our ending. We will fight Raymu the White because she has a phase that is very easy to cheese with bombs. Surprise, su surprise. So, this first wave of attacks are all pretty much all targeted to your position, but, you know, mind you, your current position, so it's really easy to side strafe out. I'm going to move her against the wall, and what that does is her next attack detonates entirely on the arena wall. And now here's a phase where she stands still, throw out all my bombs, And that's a quick kill. She's dead. I would zoom down, but y y that that's not a flattering angle. So, now I just had to wait a couple seconds for this to time out. And now, get ready, here is the only timer in the game I don't have to wait out all the way. It says 93 seconds left, but I'm not gonna have to wait that whole thing to watch this particle effect do its thing. Now you might think, Neil, you just killed the final boss. Why isn't it time? And it's not time, because time is on the fade-out after this level. You see, we solved the, you know, we saved the day, we went to the space dimension. Uh, now all we gotta do is, so they throw a party in our honor, I don't like parties, I leave, that's time. So, that was Disappearing of Gensokyo, that was one of the better runs that I've done. Not 100% perfect, but no deaths, uh, reasonably quick. Yeah, I, well, I'm pretty satisfied with the whole thing. Uh, so the reason I'm running this game is because n very few other people are, so it's an, e it's an easy one to run. And also, my name is actually in the credits. I was one of the people on the translation team for this, which was basically a crowdsourced translation. I contributed like three editing comments and nothing else because I was overwhelmed by university, but it was still enough to get my name in the credits. So that's great. Uh, yeah, that was the game. Thank you for watching. I have no clue why you watched this, but you did. Thank you.